got about another minute, and then I'll start. I hope I'm getting some people coming on. I'm glad you could join us. I'm Linda Calloway. I'm one of the artists that volunteers for Southern Allegheny Museum of Art Bedford, our local SAMA. If you have not been to visit SAMA, as soon as we're able to get out, you need to go. It's a wonderful treasure in Bedford, Pennsylvania. Okay, I've got several things to show you today. Our topic today is polymer clay. Polymer clay can be a craft or it can be a serious art form. And that's up to you to decide. I've got on some polymer clay earrings. This is not serious art. This was fun. I did this for um, a production I was in with a, a local group. And they're supposed to be silly. It was about a lady that was an art uh, animal lover, and so I made some ridiculous earrings out of polymer clay. Look how bright they are. So polymer clay can be a fun craft. Oh, before I get going, I want to show you this card. Last Thursday when I was on, we were doing watercolor technique, and I started this but didn't get the background finished. I want you to notice that the wings are still very, very light. I used a light wash on it. And then I used a darker wash on the background, and it was kind of plain, so I used a little um, ink pen to doodle on the background, and it made it more interesting. Notice there's a little bit of shadow here and there on the pig. And down at the bottom, it's a little darker. Uh, I outlined it with a fine line ink pen, so now it's become multimedia. I thought you just might want to see it. I think we put it on the SAMA site, too. So I'm just going to put it out of the way. Now, I want to show you fine art that's made with polymer clay. I didn't make this. I wish I did. It's very wonderful. It is a bowl made out of polymer clay. Polymer clay is very strong once it's been cured. The way you cure it is to put it in an oven. Or in the background back here, you can see my uh, toaster oven. And I bought that at a garage sale for a small price. You don't have to go out and buy new materials for everything. This is a technique called caning. And Marlene Vermillion is my friend that made it, and another friend bought it for me. And the front and the back are the same because the polymer clay is already colored, and she put it in layers and made canes out of it. Isn't that interesting? I keep it on the bookshelf in my living room and I really like it. I have some little uh, eggs in it that I put out. And I just wanted to share that with you. This is fine art. I don't know how much Kate paid for it. Why don't she? Okay. Now, let me show you some polymer clay. It, you buy it in bricks, and you can't see what I'm getting over here, but I'll bring it to you. This is uh, my preferred kind, Primo. Uh, this one doesn't have a, a price sticker on it, okay? Uh, they're not very expensive. You can get them at any hobby store, um, Michael's. Hobby Lobby, you can order it off the internet, Amazon has some, and Primo is my favorite brand, but it comes in other brands too. Uh, I was going to show you this other brand and I picked up another Primo. Um, here's one. This one is Filmo, F-I-M-O. It says 287 on it. This is older and it's kind of gotten hard. It doesn't matter if the polymer clay gets hard. Until it has baked, it's still good to use. You just have to soften it up. And I'm going to show you that in a minute. You can also get some that is more hobby. I bought these 
on the internet. Little bitty blocks and it's really soft. And I didn't think it would be good. But because it's soft, I mixed it with the other and it was great. And when I baked it in my um, toaster oven, it came out fine. Now, I bake it in a, a little aluminum cake pan and I put it on a regular tile. And it came out just fine. I made some flowers out of it and they turned a little bit dark. In fact, this was bright yellow. It did get a little bit burnt. I don't know if you can see that face or not. But that's okay. It, you can paint on it with acrylic paint. So uh, I've got several things that I baked in here, little pieces that I'm going to use in different things. Here's a little leaf. So these still work well, even if they get a little bit dark. I'm going to put this back over here. And I'm going to bring you down to my surface because you don't want to look at me the whole time, even though I did take a shower and fix my hair. I'm going to bring you down to the... Please don't get upset with my camera skills. Remember, we're doing this in our home, and we're the only person working in here. Now, it is a little shadowed here, um, and I apologize for that. When I want to show you something, I can bring it up to you. Um, this is a little monster that I'm going to be working on, and he's polymer clay. And um, I think before I start on the project, though, I'm going to show you some different tools. This is what's called a tissue blade. There's, this one is a ripple blade. I can't find my straight one, but you don't have to have that. You can use a knife. You can use even a plastic knife. And this is good for children to do polymer clay using plastic knives instead of sharp ones. Um, this is a needle tool. Very, very good uh, thing for making fine detail. Let me show you this one. This one is a dental tool that I had to... Let me put it against my dark blouse here. It's a little dental tool. You know, some of the toothbrushes have that little thing on the end to clean the plaque. Uh, I bought this one. I tried to find it at Walmart and couldn't. I found it on the Internet. It's really good for shaping and smoothing. But you don't have to have expensive tools. This was a cake decorating tool. I have a whole set of those, all different kinds. They were not expensive. In fact, you can find cake decorating tools to use in your art, and it's a lot cheaper than the ones that are made for the art. A roller. This is really good for rolling out the polymer clay. It's slower and it takes more time, but that's okay. Um, you can use a piece of PVC pipe. This was just cut by one of my friends and it works just fine as a roller. Um, this is a chopstick. It's a good tool. So you can get all sorts of tools around your house. Uh, these are little um, either dotting tools or uh, a stylus. And if you find any of these things around the house, that works great. Another thing that I picked up that I've used before is a little um, pick that goes with the nut, nutcrackers when you're trying to get the meat out. This is a little tool like this one, only very much smaller. Uh, it's for smoothing. So these are nice. You can get all these uh, gather up around the house. Your best tool is this. This is a good tool. And toothpicks are a good tool. So you don't have to buy expensive equipment when you're trying to work on these things. Okay. Uh, I want to show you a few other things. Oh, by the way, this is my coffee mug. You recognize Mona Lisa? And on the other side, there is uh, the Virgin Mary and Anne and Baby Jesus. I love my art bugs. Okay. I just recently bought these. Not very expensive off of Amazon. You have uh, capital letters and lowercase letters and numbers. And you can use those to push in on your polymer clay. 
and create little signs. I don't know if this is going to be forward or reverse. I don't know if you can read that or not. This says hope. I did one that said love. And you just press those in your polymer clay. You can get a lot of different designs in your polymer clay with all sorts of things. This makes good texture. Uh, all sorts of things from around your house. This is the uh, non-slip mat that you put in your cabinet. Things that you use for armatures. Um, tin foil. Armature is what you build the clay over. You can just roll up a ball of clay, but if you're going to make a little figure, it may take this whole little thing to roll it up. When you don't need the whole block of polymer, you can roll up a ball of tin foil, you can roll up a ball of paper, and then cover it with a thin sheet of the polymer and decorate it from there. So anything you can use as an armature, a wooden bead, I don't know if you can see that or not, but if I put it on something, you can. That's a, a good armature. Now, I'm in my basement today, and I just realized the lighting is it's very shattered over here. The lighting is not very good right now, and I'm sorry about that. Um, I didn't put on my ring lamp. Okay, these are polymer clay pendants that I made. I was in a production with... Um, the Off Pit Street group, and we it was Egyptian big, and we had all these Egyptian artifacts, and I made these pendants for people to wear, and uh, they're made out of polymer clay, and I painted gold, little faces. Now, I didn't individually sculpt these little faces. I used a mold. Now, you don't have to buy molds. You can sculpt them yourself. Here's the mold that I used. Now I'm going to put this on the, this is the back side, so you can kind of see what the little shapes are. This one looks like a big sun. Some of them look kind of alien. But you put the polymer clay in it and press it down. And it will stick a little bit if you don't put a release agent in there. The release agent is plain old cornstarch or water. If you just use a little bit of water in there, it will release and you'll get all these little details so that you could reproduce this. This is a little mold of another face that I made from a piece of plastic. And let me see if I can get, grab hold of that other one so you can see. I made it purple when I made it. Pardon me for the noise. Okay. Here's the mold. And I put the polymer clay in it. And it came out with a little face. Now, I added little green things. You could put little green dots of polymer clay. You could put little tiny beads in there. You could put um, little rhinestones, whatever you choose to do. Uh, you can make it any color you wish. Now, I told you that one burnt earlier. That's okay. You can paint them afterwards with acrylic paint. But if you plan them out, you don't have to paint them. Now this is, I think, a piece of student work. I'm not sure. This was supposed to be a little pendant. It is not painted. This is the color of the polymer clay. And it was put in pieces. You can see that on this side there's texture. On this side there's little dots of polymer clay to give the color. So um, look how bright it is. Now if you don't want it that bright, you could do a little bit of antiquing over it with some uh, brown polymer, uh, excuse me, brown acrylic paint in down. So there's a lot you can do with it. Okay, while I'm showing you things, I want to show you my, um, well, there went one of my rollers, my little utensil holder here. He's a little crazy monster. I like little crazy monsters. And he's made out of um, the kind of clay that you fire. He's uh, stoneware clay. I did this in a class with some uh, elementary age students and it turned out really fine. I like that. But now instead of being um, made with color clay, this one was painted after it was fired. I have another one up here holding a bunch of brushes that is unpainted or unglazed. And he's strange too. The kids did such a good job with this. We may have to get Mary Pat 
uh, to do something in her studio. Now, I'm about to get busy instead of talking all the time. I said that when the clay got hard, this is an example of some cane. Remember that one bowl I showed you had cane work? And it's very simple little pieces put together. And then you slice them up and make a bowl out of it or make something else out of it. And this is very easy to do because I haven't got the skills to do the detailed cane work yet. Okay. This is a tool that if you're going to do serious polymer clay, you really need. It's a pasta maker. This, um, I don't remember if I bought this uh, at Hobby Lobby or at a garage sale. They run about $25 at the craft store. A lot of times you can find these at garage sales. That's, I find a lot of my art supplies at the garage sale. That's where I got my coaster oven. That's where I got a lot of the little tools that I use. This is really good for uh, softening the clay. We call it conditioning. When you open a package of this clay, it's tough. And you have to cut it in little sections. Uh, I'll use this one that's already open because I may use some of this later. Um, I'm just going to cut a little piece off of here and put it through the pasta machine to show you what happens. It's adjustable on this end. You pull it out and turn it. You want it on the largest size possible to start. And you condition the clay by rolling it through. I think I got that one a little fat. Now, it's hard for me to do this sitting here. I nearly always stand up to do this. Let me see if I can do it here or not. It's starting to go through, and sometimes it just cracks into little pieces. I don't know if you can see that. Yes, you can. It's cracking. I'm going to ignore that, kind of put it back together, and go through it again. Each time you go through, it gets softer. Fold it in half put it through. You can do this without a pasta machine. You can just use one of these rollers and some kind of sheet. You should protect, if you're going to do this on your kitchen table, protect the surface with a piece of wax paper, with um, some kind of silicone mat, or just a plain paper. When you use plain paper though, it will sometimes take the oil out of the polymer clay. In fact, there's a technique called leaching, and if your clay is too soft, you can put it on the paper and leave it between sheets of paper, and it will take some of the oil out of it. Notice how it's getting better and better. Now, I'm going to turn it to a smaller setting, and I'm going to try it again. I didn't fold it that time. I'm going to fold it again. And it's getting larger and thinner. Each time you run it through, it's getting softer. You fold it in half, run it through again. Ah, now it's a lot more pliable than it was earlier. And you can use it. One of the best techniques of conditioned clay is to roll it into balls and worms. This is how you play with your regular clay is roll it into worms. I like to work on a tile. Let me move some of this right here out of the way. And I can't see if you can see my hands or not. Not too well. It's a little dark. Roll it like a, a worm. And if you want something that's equal size, you can start with the same size ball. Um, or I can start with the same size worm and half it. Now I have equal bits of polymer clay to roll into a ball. If I was going to make coral colored eyes, 
when I roll these two snakes up into balls, and I just roll them in my hand like this, or on the tile, then they're going to be the same size because I started with a snake of the same size. Okay. Um, I'm just going to show you what happens when the clay gets really hard. This is a little chopper that I bought at um, Walmart for a few dollars. It may have been 10, I don't know, but it really works. You put your hardened clay in there, and I had two or three different colors. You don't, remember I said until you bake it, you can reclaim all the clay. This was two or three different colors of clay in there, and I chopped it up. Here's what happens when you run it through the uh, pasta machine about four times. The colors start blending together, and I actually like it the multicolored way. But if you keep blending it, folding it in half and running it through the pasta machine, pretty soon it becomes one color. It gets um, blended together until there's just one color showing. I kind of like this one. Does it make any difference? No. If your clay is too hard, you warm it up. Some of the clay people online will sit on it, and that warms it up with their body heat. They'll make it into a sheet and sit on it. Some people, I wouldn't use a hair dryer, except maybe on low, because you, don't, you want to warm it up gently. Um, if it gets too soft, if you work it with your hands, you know our body produces heat. And as you work with something, it can get too soft. At with you rolling it, with moving it, when you're trying to do something precise, it may get too soft on you. Well, that's easy. Just put it in the refrigerator for a little bit, and then it will cool off, and it won't be as soft anymore. So that's one way to deal with it. Okay. So you, I, I need to quit saying okay. Uh, you can reclaim clay at any time, and you don't have to use these gadgets, but they help. Okay, before I go on, I want to mention something else. Remember I said go to the um, cake section to buy tools? This is uh, for fondant. Fondant is the icing that you roll out. And these are little fondant cutters. Excuse me. Fondant cutters. And I don't know, you can see right here. You push it down. And you can cut out these shapes. I didn't quite do that one hard enough. Let me see. This one is a flower shape, so I'm going to use this pink clay. <laughs> now, it's got a little dot in the middle, but I cut out this little flower shape using this cutter. And I've got all sorts of things over in this drawer of different cutters that you can use. Some of them are metal. You can get different shapes. This one's a little circle cutter. In here, I've got ovals. I've got a star. So if you want certain little shapes, you can use these cutters. If you don't have the cutter and you want to make a little shape, then use your needle tool and just draw around it and cut it out. You can even use scissors. I've got some little scissors in here. This is a palette knife. They make good cutters. So do you have to have specialty tools for this? No, you can use all sorts of things from around the house. Okay, I'm going to move my pasta machine out of the way. I really apologize for it being a little bit dark in here. I've got overhead uh, lights. Now, I don't know if this was from an onion bag. It was from some kind of produce that I bought. It makes great texture. I'm going to show you my little monster. Remember I said you don't catch the whole thing of polymer clay and roll it up. I used a piece of tinfoil. I think you can see that in his mouth. I used a piece of tinfoil and rolled up a nice tight ball and put this clay on it. I was going to, this is scrap clay. I was going to use this for the foundation, for the armature. And then I said, you know what? I like all those mottled colors. I like it quite a bit. 
and when I rolled it out, you can see that it's got a lot of variation in the clay. And I like that. So I decided I was going to make him green. I had rolled off some of this polymer clay, and I was going to cover this ugly color with the green. And I said, you know what? I'm not going to do that. I like it. I want you to notice that I've got some eyeballs in here that came in a package. But you know what? I didn't like the package eyes. I can't bake this. If I bake the plastic in there, they'll melt. So it's, I like these eyes quite a bit, but I can't use them. So I put them in there to see what it looked like. But I'm going to have to pick them out, and I'm going to make some very similar to it out of polymer clay because I know then that they won't melt. Now, I like to ex I like to experiment. I can experiment with those plastic eyes in there. Some plastic holds up to it, some don't. So if I wanted to experiment, I could do it, but I must be ready to acknowledge that it may not work. Okay, I've got some white clay here that I played with earlier and it's got some color on it. There's a couple of things I can do is I can pick that off and it's clean enough to put in there. But this is a monster. So does it really matter if his eyeballs are a little colored? No, it doesn't. It does help to pinch the end of it when you put it in there. I pinched it in there and then I put it in. Now he needs, he has an eyeball, he needs an iris. He needs a uh, pupil. So I am making his eyes different sizes on purpose because, after all, he's a monster. Who cares if his eyes are the same size? I think it makes him look more interesting. Now, I did make a point on this one. I'm putting it in here. This just helps it stay together better when we uh, put it in the hole. I was not going to put anything in his mouth for a different color. And then I thought, if you can see that tinfoil in there, I'm going to have to do something. I'm trying to see if you can see it. Yeah, you can see that tinfoil. I'm going to have to do something. So mouths on humans are red, pink. I'm going to use green because this definitely is not a human. Is he from another planet? He could be. Is he... Um, a, I think he may be an aquatic creature. If you watch movies, you know that there was a whole nation of aqua people that we knew nothing about. And they lived in our oceans and we were unaware of them. So is this a creature from our ocean? It could be. He can be whatever you want him to be. So I'm going to line the mouth with green because he is an aquatic creature with a green mouth. It's going to cover up that tinfoil. It's going to give it a base that I can add teeth to. I think that uh, a creature that lives under the ocean is going to have very sharp teeth. So I'm going to give him some sharp teeth. But first of all, I have to go ahead and line the top part of the mouth. And I'm just cutting a piece that I'm going to stick in there. And that's too big. So you just adjust it. And you play with it till it gets to the way you like it. There we go. That's good on this side. It's too long on this side. So I'll cut it off. Then I've got the tinfoil all covered. The tinfoil stays in there. If you made it a paper armature, as long as it's covered with polymer clay, it would be okay. If it wasn't completely covered, the paper might scorch or burn. I don't run off and leave my toaster oven on unattended because it is warm and I want to make sure that it does fine. But I, I plug it in and watch it and make sure that it's off, especially since I bought it used. 
uh, I want to make sure it works. You can buy a, uh, I'm having trouble with some words today, um, a thermometer so that you can control the temperature in your oven and make sure that it's accurate. Okay, I got his mouth lined with green. I'm going to give him green eyes too. So I'm starting out with tiny, tiny, tiny little balls. I don't want them large. I can roll them on my pile or I can just roll them in my hand. I don't want large eyeballs. So I'm rolling it out in my hand and I am going to put them on his eyes. You can make him cross-eyed. You can make him as weird as you want or as um, tame as you want. And that one's not real, real round, but that's okay. Now, notice his eyeballs are definitely different sizes. That's fine. Now, if I'm going to put black in there for an iris, I've got to get the tiniest little piece of black. Now, my, I just took a shower, but my hands look dirty. My nails look dirty. The reason they look dirty is you get a little bit of this under your nail, and it really shows up. So it's not dirt. It's polymer clay. And I didn't get the equal amount. I got one bigger than the other. I think what I'm going to do with him is... give him a cloth body instead of a polymer clay body and stiffen it and then it's going to be interesting. Okay, there's his eyes. But that's not how I want to leave his eyes. I want to take some clay and give him hooded eyelids. So the way I'm going to give him hooded eyelids is roll out some clay I can do it on the tile or in my hands and come over his eye. It <laughs> kind of looks like a Muppet. <laughs> and I'm giving him an eyelid. And I'm giving him um, a scrub. He's frowning. And I can take my little dental tool and I can blend this in really, really well. I can form a ridge up here for the um, eyebrow. What you do with it is up to you. Now, is he going to have a human-like nose? I don't think so. I think he's going to have a more fishy nose. So look what I'm doing right here. I'm taking this little tool, and I'm giving him more like nasal slits. And there you can see that uh, on the back, I decided to give ridges. And you just push up this extra clay with one of your tools and make a ridge. And keep doing it. Oh, I just pulled them off. That's the thing with polymer clay. I could make a little snake. Over here, I'm going to roll it out. I'm going to do it on the tile so it's easier. And when you're rolling it out, use your hand. Roll it out. And I can lay this ridge right across there and pinch it up a little bit. Kind of got the idea about the frills on it, kind of from the creature from the Black Lagoon. Since I decided he came from the ocean, I got a little bit inspired by that creature. Am I trying to make him? No, but I'm making some ridges on him. Okay, I've got a good start on him. I'm going to give him little tiny white teeth, but what I'm going to do to show you how to do that is you drill a little hole. I don't know if you can see that little hole or not. You take something sharp. It can be a needle tool. It can be a pencil. I had a pencil here. It can be a toothpick. And just make a little hole. The reason that we want a little hole in there is it holds the teeth in, and it holds it in better. Now, 
He's not going to get finished today. Well, maybe he will this afternoon, but not with you. I'm just going to work on him. I'll probably put some little frills on the side of his head to be like gills. If he was a monster that wasn't aquatic, I would give him horns. You can attach horns to him. Do they have to be white? No, they can be pink. They can be whatever your imagination have you making. He could be, I don't know, let's make it pointed. And if I was going to add the horn to him, I would drill a little hole and put that in there. But he's not. I'm going to go ahead and finish him. And um, we will link it back to the site later. He's going to have teeth. He's going to have the little gills on the side of his head. He's going to have some frills on the back. And I'm going to, look, there's a little uh, key stuck in the bottom of it so I can have something to hold on to. I am going to give him a cloth body, I think, and use some different fabric. Makes it interesting. Now, I'm going to put him to the side right now because I want to show you a fairy garden. That's something that may interest you more than monsters. I love monsters. You can see that in my um, tools, the canters that I have are different monsters. And I think I'm pretty good with them. But I'm going to put him aside and show you the start of my fairy garden. This is the fairy house. I did a very thin sheet of black polymer clay and put on it. I didn't use tin foil because it was too lumpy. I just got some paper and folded it two or three times and then taped it together to make a cylinder. I started it on this jar and I put tin foil on the jar so that I could slip it on and off. See that slips right on there? But that jar was too big and I thought that's going to take so much polymer clay and it's going to take me a long time to build this little fairy house. So what I decided to do is to make it smaller. So my armature is this paper. It's going to be covered in polymer clay, so it's not going to burn in my toaster oven. Now this is tinfoil. I wadded up a ball, and I'm going to make a nice little um, top for my stone house. Now the way I'm making the stone, I did it black on purpose so that I could come in with little balls of clay and make the separate stones on here. Now my clay is not showing up the way I wanted it to. This was scrap clay that I rolled out. Notice all the different colors. There's kind of a gold, there's kind of a tan, there's kind of a reddish color in there. And stones are that way, they're different colors. But it didn't show up so much. I just pinch off a little bit make it into a ball, squash it, and add it in here. And I'm going to try to keep it where there's a little bit of black line in between there. If I don't see the black line in between there, I can take my tool and push it. If that doesn't work, I can make the tiniest little rope right here. And when I make that tiny little bitty rope, I can put it in between it so that I can see the black line. Okay, I'm going to continue to make little stones to put all over it. I know Jennifer said this, or Jen said this yesterday. It's hard to work and talk at the same time. I can do it fairly well because I've been a public school teacher so long, but it's hard. It's hard to talk and work at the same time. Roll it into a tiny little ball, squish it, and add it here. And I'm going to try to get different colors. If it turns out all the same color, I can take something like this yellow and add a little bit to it and change the color. That might be a little bit bright. I don't know if I like that or not. Another thing I can do, which I am going to do, is add moss to it. And it's easy. I saw another clay artist doing this the other day in a tutorial and she did a wonderful job. What she did was just take a little piece and squash it down a little bit and lay it down. And then she took a needle tool and went dip, 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 dip. And she 
put it where she wanted. She did bark like it was a tree. Well, the moss will grow on top of rocks and stones, too. So I can take this little needle tool and go up and down and get it the texture of moss. And I can put it in between the stones if I want to. I can just put it on top of the stones. And it's not the straight green color. Because the green color was a little bit bright. I put some other colors in with it to make it more a mossy color. So I'm going to have to take some time with this and put different pieces of moss on here with my stones. I want them uneven. When you start building a rock wall or a rock house, the good stonemasons, that's what you call a person that works with stone and builds the walls of the house, the good stonemasons will put these rocks or stones so close together that they almost touch and they will take their trowel and hit the edges and make it fit in there. Well, I'm not going to be that precise. I'm just rolling a ball, mashing it, and getting different shapes and put it in here. Remember what I said what I was going to do if I got some too close together and I didn't have the black showing through. I can make a little bitty worm and push it in between. Now if I get a big blank spot right there where it's really black, I can make the tiniest ball and make a tiny little stone that goes in there. But you have I almost have to cut it with my fingernail and make a tiny, tiny little stone to put in here. And then squash it just slightly. Now, I need to go all the way around this to make the little stone house. But the fairy cannot get in this house without a door. I would not want to live in a stone house without a window. So how in the world are we going to make a door and a window? Well, you have to decide what color they're going to be. I want my windows to be black because when you look inside a house, that I'm going to get my roller. Remember when you're rolling this clay out, put nice, even pressure on it. Okay. Do I have a square one over here? No, I don't see one. So, I will, oh, here's one, but it's, Awfully big. That's bigger than I want. Now I can cut it out and half it or make it smaller. So don't throw this clay away over here. This is scrap clay, but I can turn it back into something I can use by just rolling it up. I can turn it back into something I can use by putting it through the pasta machine or rolling it out with my rolling pin. If you don't have anything that you can use for a rolling pin, you can use the straight edge glass. There's a lot of things you can use. Now, that's, this window is much too large for this house. So I just need to cut it down. I think I want long, narrow um, windows. Okay. I like that. Maybe it's a little long, but on top of my stone, I can put a long, it is a little bit long. I can do a long, narrow window. So, here's my knife. Now, I said I was going to quit saying that. Here's my black window. I'm going to put wood around it. So let me get some of this rope and I'm going to roll out a nice worm to make it into wood. I, this is the same color as the stone so I may want to change it. Remember I won't have time to finish this 
while we're on here. I've got another about 15, 20 minutes. So I'm just showing you how to get started on this. Roll it out. Another thing that you can do that helps you roll it out easier is use a little block. This helps to do even pressure. If you use a little acrylic block or something, you could use a piece of cardboard. And your fingers get uneven pressure, and you can see the little um, ridges that your fingers do. But if you get something else to roll it out, you get a more even worm. I haven't found a better name for these other than worm. And then we can put this around the window to have the... Um, I told you I was having trouble with my words today. Facing to go around the window. I can come in with a needle tool, with any other thing, and put some texture on it. I could make little shutters to go around this window. I think that's what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to make some little shutters. What color do you think I should make the door? The door could be green, but I'm going to have some um, vines on this house, some uh, leaves on this house. I think maybe a red would be good. So, oh, no, I've got a pink roof. Um, purple, maybe. Maybe pink so that it matches the roof. But I can put this little casing around this window. I can also put a little skinny little worm right here on the middle of that to look like that it's a divided window. And whatever I do for texture on the other, I have to do on this. Now vines, I've got the moss on there started. I'm gonna have to make a tiny, tiny little, little bitty rope. Remember it is more even if you do it out on top of a tile or if you use the little block. And I do apologize for it being dark. I'm going to figure out a way. The outlet right behind me was not working. I think it may be a throne breaker, and I couldn't stick in my little uh, ring light. But I apologize for this being so dark. But I think you can get the idea. I just shredded that poor little vine. Now, I can take this little vine and make it go all around where I want to on the outside of this little cottage because this little cottage is out in the woods. I have little leaves that I can make out of this um, polymer clay that's been rolled out. And it's, this is one of the fondant cutters. And it leaves a nice pattern on this. This is a tiny bit thick for this to cut through. So let me try it again beside it. And roll it just a little bit. And then I'm going to show you how to hand build one. Because you don't need these cutters. These are fun. These are good for beginning um, artists to use. And it's just a little bit thick here. But you can see that there's a little bitty leaf. I could put it over here on the window. I can have it shaped a little bit like a leaf coming on there. But it's really, really easy to make your own leaf. Again, just take this, make it a ball, squash it, give it a point probably on both ends. That one's a little thick. Give it a point on both ends and then take your needle tool. Remember you can add texture with something if you want. And put some little veining in there. I like these probably better than I do the ones that are cut. And then shape it. Stick it around your window. Have some of them sticking out. These get hard when they have been uh, cured, when they've been baked in the oven, they get cured. 
And here's one. It's stuck on there. Let me see if I've got it. It gets very hard. But this is really too big to put on my small little house. That's a huge leaf. So I'm having trouble getting in there. There we go. That's a little bit large for this. I like these smaller ones quite a bit better. But I think I like them better when I hand build them. Now what in the world will you do with the fairy house? I'm going to have to spend some more time on my roof. Several different things that I can use on this roof use a smoothing tool like this, use my fingers, remember when you warm it up, it's easier to do, and you can smooth it out. I do need to clean my hands, by the way. I've got a little bit of black on them, and I'm transferring that little bit of black onto this pink roof. Now, if you cannot get this as smooth as you like, add texture to it. I like that texture quite a bit. And it covers up those imperfections. I like that a lot. I don't know if you can see that texture that I just put on there. So I think what I will do, instead of worrying about getting all those little things, I'm going to add a lot more texture. Another thing you can do is, like we were adding the stones to the bottom of the house, the base of the house, you can take and add petals to the top of the house. It's going to take you a while. I would start at the bottom, do a petal, another one beside it, and build up, and you have little tiny shingle looking things that look like flower petals. So you can do that on the side of your building. And then when you get it built up the way you want, I would bake it. This is going to have the tin foil inside. Once it's baked, you could leave the tin foil in it, or you could pull it out. That's up to you. But see, you could just stack those up on the edge, and you get the little petal shape. I like this texture. That's what I'm going to do. And it's just this tool that had the shape on it. So I'm going to make it rough. And just overlap them, go in there and do it. I don't know what this top is, but it fits over this really well. So I'm going to have a couple of windows, I'm going to have a door, I'm going to have this, and this is my fairy house. Where in the world do we put that? I'm glad you asked. You make a fairy garden. Now, I've got all this clay that I have conditioned, and I just leave it in little sheets like this. You can put it in a sheet protector, you know the little plastic sheets that you put uh, papers in and notebooks to keep them clean? That's a good thing to put these in. If you lay them on top of each other, you see how that pink one is stuck to that? They will sometimes get stuck. So you really don't want to lay them together unless you've got something between them. You can put, I don't see it laying here, but one of the things that is really good to use are, you know, the sheets that your stickers come on? Those papers are really good to put in between there. I've got other things out to show you, and I didn't. I'm going to do it very quickly. This is a texture mat. It looks like rocks or something. It's really interesting. And remember I said you need a release agent? The easiest one is water. You just spray it with a tiny bit of water, and you can put all this texture in there. Okay, I am going to clean off a spot here so that I can bring my fairy garden over. I need to be careful. I do not want to get dirt on this polymer clay. If I get dirt on my polymer clay, whoop, now that just fell all the way on the floor. I'm going to scoot this back a little bit and bring my fairy garden over. So it's hard me while I get up for a second here. Now, I'm going to have to try to get this where it's going to be in here that you can see. This is an old dish pan. I found this at, 
trying to see where I found it. Um, at a second hand place. I like to go thrifting. You can find all sorts of things. I went out in my yard this morning and got little violets and little wild strawberries. And I'm going to plant some of those in here. This was from last year. This moss was still in there. This had been sitting out on my patio. You have to be careful with it sitting out on your patio, though, because it gets too wet, and you have to drain it every so often. I could drill holes in the bottom. I may go ahead and do that so that it will drain, and then you just keep it sprayed. I love this moss that's in there. This plant is a small one that I just put in there. This is one that I haven't planted in there yet. If it's got a nice root ball on it, I've got to decide where it goes. Well, I'm going to have to put my little fairy house in here. I've got to be careful, though, not to get too much dirt on it. So I think maybe right under this tree would be a good place to put the fairy house. Because we want it to be kind of nestled in there where you can see it. But it's not too obvious. You do not want the fairy to be in danger from other little woodland creatures. I think they kind of hide. I don't see them when I go out in the woods. I don't know if you do or not. Maybe that pink roof is a little bit too bright. But I could also put some mushrooms in here with it or little flowers on a stick. I've got all this polymer clay that I could make other things with. I think I want to put the other plant right over here. This is a piece of volcanic rock that would have been out in my yard. You can use all sorts of things. I want a path in here made out of stone. Well, I don't have the right color. That's a good place for it. I have to dig down in there. Now my hands are going to be nice and dirty. There's some pieces of broken pottery in here, too, just for color. I don't know if you can see this one or not. It's a piece of plate. I may break that up more. But you can... I want a little pest to go in here. So I've got these little stones that come with... Um, you can buy them at Dollar Tree. You can buy them all over the place that you put in. But I don't like this to be that bright. I want it to look like a rock. So I put the polymer clay veneer over it. I got the same color as I used on the stones on the side of the house. So I'm going to cover these with uh, the polymer clay. And once I bake them, they're permanent. It doesn't matter if they get wet. It doesn't matter if they freeze. It will kill my plants. I'll have to bring this in before next winter so that it won't freeze. But I can set this up. I can put a little pathway going from my cottage over here. I could make a little polymer clay pond with light blue um, polymer clay in a lid or something. I can put it down in the soil. I can put a little bit of real water in it. The water will not hurt the polymer clay. So I may have the path going from my cottage over this way and have a pond over here. Uh, I need to plant these little violets that I have. Because these are going to look good in here because of their flowers. And I can plant them anywhere I want in here, and they're going to do well. They'll do pretty good until, well, inside they'll probably do well even through July. But I know these little things that you have out in your yard, too. This is wild strawberry. They, they make little bitty yellow flowers on them, and then they turn into these little things that look like strawberries. Because they're such a small size, that makes a low ground cover. That would be really good to be planting any place I want to in here, under the trees and then over. This fairy garden will need diffused sunlight. You put it in direct sunlight, and it's going to burn these plants. But diffused sunlight will be very good for it. So I will finish this. I will make a path going here, probably a pond. I will cover all this up except for the mossy part with ground cover and um, put some mushrooms in here too, I think. I can make them out of polymer clay. Uh, I can either start with a base of 
tin foil to make my mushrooms. I can even do wadded paper. I can do whatever I want, but I will make them out of the polymer clay. And when I get finished with this, I'll take two or three shots of it so that you can see what it looks like on the website when you go back. Now, I am doing Thursdays. Uh, next Thursday, I am going to be doing a painting of a coyote. And it's going to be a sunset picture with the coyote. You know the traditional coyote that they, they had a few years ago that had a kerchief around his neck and howling at the moon? Well, I probably won't put the kerchief around his neck. But we're going to do a simple sunset in the background, a little mountain top, and the coyote howling at the moon. But I'm also going to tell a story. It's a Cherokee Indian tale about how the coyote got its call. And I love the oral tradition of storytelling. That's how all the First Nations communicated their knowledge when the kids would ask, why is the sky blue? How did the coyote get so loud? Why is he doing it? They would tell stories, traditional stories. And I'm going to tell one next week, and we're going to have a painting of a coyote. So I would love for all you people to come back and share it with me. I'm Linda Calloway. I do paint parties, the Flying Pig paint parties with Linda. And I have some other free content on my webpage, so feel free to come and see that on Facebook. Uh, if you've got questions, I know I've been seeing things scroll across the screen. People that said they were here, but I cannot teach and look up at that small camera and read. I have to put my face in here, and you don't need to see my face. I've been trying to get where it's focused. is too tough for me. Uh, Morgan and Michael said that they'd try to answer questions, and we can answer them after this recording is over. So... Uh, I don't know what the schedule is for next week. I know Wednesday is Jen again, and I think um, she is going to be doing, you know, that didn't stick with me. Morgan told me what she was going to be doing, but it didn't stick with me. So tune in for that. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday next week, we should have content for you. I appreciate you coming along. I hope you learned something from this. And because I didn't get finished with it, an hour is not a long time to do any project. So I will have this fairy house finished for you. I will have it put together. I can't promise my little monster will be done because I am making him a stuffed cloth body. But I will try to have it done, and I'll show you those next week. Uh, thank you very much for coming. Sama appreciates you. Uh, when we're open, I want everybody to come and see Sama and enjoy the things. We will have in-person classes when we're allowed to for adults and children, and we would love for you to come with our classes. And until then, we're going to be keeping you busy from the Internet. So thank you very much, and good luck. Here went my camera almost. I grabbed it. Finish.